Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions this morning with Pastor Sutton on this Saturday. Saturday, it's the 4th of February, and it's 4 degrees. That's a heat wave. When you've been, you know, a couple of days in the sub-zero digits, 4 is pretty good. And rumor has it, I mean, meteorologic, meteorol, meteor, mete, say that five times fast. The weather guys, see, when you can't say the word, find another one. And that's that's the advantage of a liberal education. The weather guys say that, that uh, by midday we might be up to 24, 24 degrees. And I, I was just looking at the forecast here on the on the computer here, on the confuser, and uh, 40s by Wednesday. Now figure that out. Last Wednesday, 30 below. This Wednesday, 40 above. That's a 70 degree swing. That's a, a, a swing that's as warm as you guys who are hiding in Florida have for a regular temperature. If you don't like the weather in Wisconsin, wait five minutes or maybe five days, it'll change. It just amazes me how, how much the weather can change though. I was, I was just watching a, a, a video before I began here. Um, well, while I was waiting for the countdown to go and stuff, um, Fox News had a thing with a, uh, uh, what do you call them? Well, an earth scientist. And apparently the core of our planet has stopped moving. Um, the, 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 the solid iron core in the center of the planet normally rotates. It's, it's slowed down and it stopped moving and they expect it to start moving the other direction. Um, uh, apparently Chinese scientists in Beijing have identified this at the University of Beijing. And, um, but they said, don't worry, it, it happens every 70 years. You know, it, it's amazing how many things that we think we're so wise and sm so smart. We learn so many things about our, the world around us. We don't, even, we don't even know that the core of our planet stops and starts until now. Um, you know what? The Lord is good. He's in control of whatever it is it is, right? Um, I, the, 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 we think of the North Pole and the South Pole, right? Um, uh, but I know, I know I've read that um, pre periodically over the millennia, um, that's flipped. And the North Pole has become the South Pole, and the South Pole has uh, become the North Pole, and it involves a lot of uh, volcanic activity and, and earthquakes and things, um, but the planet's still here and the Lord is still watching over his creation and, and uh, protecting his own. Um, maybe that's what this stopping and reversing does. I, I don't know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not that kind of a thinker, but it's just the, the world is a wonderful thing. God created it a, an amazing, an amazing creation in which uh, we live and we are part of and it's just sometimes it's just astonishing so anyway let's see who's here this morning uh we don't have any commemorations today so we can kind of start uh as usual here i gotta refresh um i think i'm gonna miss some people leela good morning geraldine and neil good morning renee good morning glenn hello there verna good morning ken Good morning, dude. A couple of weeks, we'll see you guys. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Connie and Robin, good morning. Getting the coffee on. All right. Mushtaq, good evening there in Karachi. You know, what a wonder. Well, you know, you, you stop and think about this for a minute. I remember, and it's not that many years ago, 30, 30 35 years ago, I think, that a, a telephone call um, from La Crosse, Wisconsin to Madison was uh, expensive. I, I remember my dad grumbling when I'd call Bonnie and talk to her for an hour when she was at college. Um, and here we are today, uh, the cost of an internet connection. Um, and we're not just talking on the phone, but we're actually, you know, it's video. Um, it's amazing when you think about it. Uh, and yeah, I, oh, I know where I was going with that. It, it, and not only, you know, lacrosse to Madison, but all the way around the world, over to Pakistan. So, it, you know, God has given us good gifts and he's given us questionable gifts, but he continues to preserve his creation. 
God gives us all, all things that God gives us are good. And what we do with them, that's, and of course, with this technology, other things have happened that aren't so good. Oh, well, anyway, Ann and Deb and Grant, good morning. Michael, good morning. 75 degrees down in Florida. Well, you know, that's all right. That's all right. I'm refreshing my screen here because I'm, I'm cheating today. I got my phone over here and I'm watching um, the comments pop up because they don't pop up as fast here on the computer screen. Uh, so Jill and John, good morning. There's Bonnie in there. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Uh, down to the 40s at night in Florida. Well, you know what? But that's okay. Mindy, good morning to you. And if Marv's around, say hi to him for me. Uh, or if Tim's lurking in the background, although he's probably asleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, technology can be wonderful. It has its its blessings and its curses. So, um, yeah. So let's uh, let's get down to the business for which we are here and gathered this morning. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. That's the order we follow each day here. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. I need to change the page I'm on so I can be where I told you to be. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 127, Psalm 127, um, it's only a five-verse psalm, so we've got the whole thing here. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <laughs> you know, this psalm is almost twofold in, in its fitting into our world today. The first two verses talk about um, the things that, that, that we do, right? Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. If, if, we, if the things that we do in our life are done purely for our benefit, if we, if we think we're doing them just for us, um, then they serve no purpose. Um, it's Solomon who gives us the wisdom that vanity, vanity, all is vanity, that, that everything that we accomplish with our hands at the end of our life is done, right? Um, uh, the great wealth that we might build for ourselves um, after, we, after we go to be with the Lord, who spends it, right? Uh, we build, another lives in it. We accumulate, another one cares for it. Um, unless the Lord watches over the city, uh, the, the watchman stays awake in vain. And it's in vain to rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. And it's Christ who tells us, you know, don't be anxious over anything. You know, the, the, he clothes the grass of the field in more more radiant garments than than uh, Solomon himself. And he feeds the uh, the sparrows and the crows if he if he feeds them. Uh, then, then who, who neither who neither um, who neither sow no harvest nor harvest if he cares for them then does he not care does he not care more for us now on every hair on your head is numbered not not mine They're, they seem to be falling in numbers but right so that's one thing but think about that thing in the next part and he's talking about the psalmist talking about children children are a heritage from the lord the fruit of the womb will reward and and i i grew up in this 
age of the Gen Xers um, when we were taught that um, you don't have a family until you can afford to have one, until your your wealth and your establishment is set, and then then you then you have a family. Uh, so when our first child was born, I told my wife, we, "I'm not ready," um, you know. But you know what? We did all right. Um, and when the second one came along, we'd kind of gotten ourselves established in the community and, and in my work and things like that. And I said, I'm, I'm ready now, you know. Um, but there should have been many more in between because the Lord provides, not us. It's not our toil and labor that worry, right? The Lord the Lord provides, and, and children are a blessing. Um, blesses the man who fills his quiver with them. Now, you don't have to go nuts uh, about that. And there is a group that was called the quiverfuls and you know that's kind of maybe insane but on the other hand the more children you have the greater the blessing that you have um, your if you if you've built your household in the lord um, and those children are in the lord that's that many more people in the world in the lord and then we turn around we wonder why our churches are shrinking and our children are falling away and that's because our focus was on other things, and, and we know it, and I confess it. I confess it, and I know that I know that the Lord has forgiven me. Um, but by the same token, I, I mourn what has happened in our society today, where our our focus is so much on me and not on on the Lord and what He will do for us, and and, and how we've turned away from having children, even even to the point where we've as a society, not each and every one of you, and not me certainly, but but as a society, we have um, become murderers of our children, and we think it's it's okay, and it's not. It's murder. Okay, well, that's our psalm today. Let's go on to our reading here from Job. Job, I think we're going to Job. We got rid of Zachariah. We're into Job chapter one, verses one through 22, which kind of establishes uh, what's going on in the uh, the book of Job. Um, and as we read this, I don't know how much of this we're going to be reading here. If we're going all the way through Job, um, I don't think we are, because his friends pick on him and stuff, and that's long. Job's a longer book than you think it is. Um, but remember, it's not about Job's suffering. It's about Job's faithfulness to God. So keep that in, keep that in mind. Um, so Job chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed... 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, and very many servants, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them, uh, of them all. For Job said, It may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them, came among them. The Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, 
All that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone... <clears throat> Excuse me, I alone have escaped to tell you. While well, he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans have formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While well, he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are a dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that kind of sucks, right? I mean, if it happened to you or I, we would probably just simply fall apart. And and that's that's sort of the point of all of this. Um. We are at the start of this. We are shown the the the, the size of Job's holdings, right? Um, and notice that the the first thing is that he's faithful to God. He fears God uh, and turns from evil, blameless and upright. Um, he, he walks in the way that a Christian ought, having been forgiven of all sin through the blood of Christ. And although Job does not know Christ because this is occurring, this is actually occurring, if I remember right, in the days of Abraham, of the Hebrews. Um, the first thing is that he's blameless before God, turning away from evil, uh, living the way according to God's law, right? Um, and uh, th the next possession that's listed for him is his children. He's got 10 children, seven boys and, and three daughters. Um, and then, and then his animals, the, the sheep and the camels and the oxen and the donkeys, and and, and all of his servants, um, all of his holdings. Uh, and so he was, he was a wealthy, wealthy man, right? Um, his his faithfulness, the Lord had blessed, um, but the blessing is not necessarily in the possessions, but in in the family and in his faithfulness. And so um, they're, they're his, his children, as they had their day, I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, birthday, because it was um, his sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day, or at least when they took turns having feasts in their houses and they'd drink wine and invite the sisters and drink with them. And they'd, you know, they'd have a party, they'd have a party. And when the days of the feast, right, not just like one meal, but days of a feast uh, had run their course. Um, Job would send and consecrate them. He'd make an offering for his children because they might have sinned. They, they might have done wrong before the Lord. And, and as their father, he's, he feels responsible uh, to God to make sure that uh, the sins are sacrificed for. Um, and so these things Job did continually. And so we're, we're shown that Job here at the start is a, is a good man in the sight of the Lord. He, he, he does that all, the Lord, that all that the Lord asks of him, he does, and, and the Lord sustains him. But all these things that he, have, that he has, that he possesses, are from the Lord. He, he's very aware that they are not his. 
but have been given to him by God. So then we move to the throne room of God and the sons of God, the angels and Satan, who's a fallen angel, are there before him. And, and, and God says to Satan, where have you been? What have you been doing? Well, I've been wandering around the earth, looking at the, looking at men and seeing what they're doing, walking up and down on it. And so the Lord says to Satan, have you, have you met my, my uh, uh, servant Job? Have, have you met Job who is faithful to me? Oh yeah, I, I met that guy. I saw him. He is faithful to you. There's no question. But but he's faithful for a reason. It's it's because it's because you've given him so much. You know, you've given him ten children, and you've given him a, a wife to bear those children, and, and you've given him all these animals and land and servants, and and uh, he, he loves you and and serves you because you've blessed him. So if if you were to reach out your hand, Lord, and take those things away from him, he would curse you. Now, the Lord knows that Job knows that the things that he possesses are not his. And, 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 and Job recognizes that, that, the, that the, what he has is from God. And so the Lord looks to Satan and says, okay, all right. I say, you know, it's, this is not in the text, but this is what God is saying. I know that Job's faith is, is his trust is faith, it's pure. And, and, it, and it's a, a love for the Lord, his God, who... Uh, who is the creators of the heavens and the earth. So Satan, I'll tell you what, you you can touch everything he has. You are in charge. You go, I will allow you, God, the Lord, allow you, I'll take the hedge from around his property and possessions. I will allow you to do whatever it is that you think you need to do to turn him away from me. And... Uh, but you may not touch him, right? You may not harm or hurt uh, uh, Job himself. Behold, all that he has is in your hand, only against him. Do not stretch out your hand. So the Lord, so the so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and so he does it, right? Um, on a day when the when the children were partying at their eldest brother's house. First, um, the oxen and the donkeys were plowing or set upon by um, another nation. The Sabians came down and, and put them all to the edge of the sword. Um, and a servant comes and tells him that. Uh, and another comes up and says that uh, fire came and burned up the sheep and the servants. Um, and another servant comes running up and says, uh, the Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on your camels and, and uh, took them and struck them down in the servants. Um, and only this one escaped. And, 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 and while he was speaking, another one comes running up and says, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking at, their, at your eldest son's house. And the, the wind came and blew it down and destroyed it. And they've all been killed. So in, in a day, all of the earthly possessions, I, I, I guess Job still has his land, but all of the earthly possessions that Job had are gone. His children, his uh, animals, beasts of burden, uh, and his servants, except maybe these four who ran up to tell him, they're all gone. Now, what would your response be? What would you do if you were out one day at the shopping center and somebody ran up and said, your, your house, your car, your children, your dog, your cat, your horses, your cattle, um, everything that you've ever had is gone. It's been taken from you. It's been destroyed. What would you do? See, it's not about the suffering. God allows suffering to come upon all of us. All of us, all of us have some form of suffering. Um, Christ says, take up your cross. Um, part of being a Christian is suffering under the cross. Christ suffered for us on the cross. We suffer clinging to the base of the cross. Even as his blood flows down from that cross and washes away our sin, we suffer. And much of it, much of it is for his name's sake. 
And there's a lot of suffering going on in this world right now. And I'm not talking about just illness and hunger and death, but I'm talking about mental anguish, confusion, um, not understanding who people are as themselves or what God has given them, not recognizing that the Lord is the creator of the heavens and earth and everything has been given to us. But Job, he rises, he tears his robe, he shaves his head, he falls on the ground and worships him, worships the Lord. Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return. Everything that I have, from the day I'm born until the day I die, I am but a steward of. It all belongs to our Heavenly Father. That's hard to imagine. It, not, no, it's not hard to imagine. It's hard to, to comprehend, to grasp hold of, to, to truly believe and understand that everything, every little bit that you have, nothing is yours to keep. Now think about that. It's true. Because when your last day comes, when you breathe your last and you leave this world, nothing goes with you except your faith. Except faith in Christ. That's the only thing that can go with you. Faith in Christ. And so probably, most definitely, the most important possession you have is what God gave you in your baptism, faith in Christ, the new creation, the new life that he gave you in Jesus, the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life so that when you leave this world, the possessions don't matter. Christ matters. Job falls on the ground and worships, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Job did not sin. It would have been so easy to curse his neighbor, to curse God, uh, and, and, and lay the blame at the feet of the Lord, which the Lord can take. He's got broad shoulders. He can handle it. Job says that what I have, I did not deserve, and, and what I now have, I still do not deserve. But Job still has his life at this point. God has protected him. He's, he's kept a hedge around Job himself and his wife. The two are one flesh. Job's wife has been protected from all of this, even though the suffering, the burden of suffering on both of them is so great. Imagine losing all your children and all your possessions. And yet, in the face of that, Job remains faithful. That's an example to us, right? The scriptures are written for our learning, Paul says, and, and that's, what it, that's what this is. As, as we lack for things in this world, or as we lose things in this world, or as we suffer in this world under the, under the cross that Christ has given us to bear, because God allows, just as he does with Job, he allows suffering to come upon us to test our faith, to test our, to test the faith that he's given us. In the same way that the, that the um, smelter heats up the fire with the gold in the pot to remove the impurities, to strengthen the gold, to make it more refined, he lets suffering come upon us so that our eyes remain on him suffering comes into us into this in suffering comes to us in this world and god always gives us a way out through christ he gives us a way to endure and by enduring a way to live in christ jesus our lord in all of this job did not sin or charge god with wrong because he's god Nothing he does is wrong. Nothing he allows is wrong. In, them there, in him there is no sin at all. But in us there is. And so in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our sins, in the midst of our struggles and daily life, in the midst of this fallen world where there's suffering and the, is great, we look to Christ, the light that came into the world. Christ who 
baptized you into his most holy name, feeds you with his most holy body and blood so that you should never have to hunger or thirst for righteousness, who forgives all your sins and gives you new life in him. You came into the world naked, you go out of the world naked, but you go out with Christ. You came in alone, but you're never alone again in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stop there for today. Our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who governs all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning, where's my bookmark here? And uh, again, this first week's of prayers focus on the Lord's Prayer. This, this prayer focusing on deliver us from the evil one. O oh Lord, you are my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. You gave your servant David rest from Saul's pursuit and delivered him from the hands of his many enemies. You rescued your apostle Paul from the many trials, but also gave boldness to him and all your holy martyrs who confessed the faith, suffered all, even death, and have received the crown of life. You are a mighty fortress for all who trust in you. When I am afraid, you invite me to come to you for strong protection. When I am convicted of sin, you call me to repentance and to offer grace, mercy, and peace for all offenses. When I am in any trouble, you bid me come to you for help. With great love and patience, you hear the prayers of all who call on you in faith. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and listen to my cries for mercy. Protect me this day from the devil and all his flaming darts. Deliver me from the dangers of this life that would afflict my body and rescue me from any evil that would lead my soul away from you. Thwart the plans of the devil to destroy my faith and grant me even more of your word and spirit, so I may cling to you at all times. And finally, at my life's end, take me from this valley of sorrow to yourself and heaven. This in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask also your mercy, grace, comfort, and assurance upon those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Especially this day we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, John, and all who call upon your most holy name. Strengthen them each day, O Lord, and comfort them in the assurance of your grace and mercy through your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuous and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our daily devotion for Saturday to a close. Tomorrow's Sunday. Go to church. Go uh, go receive those gifts of grace and mercy that come from Christ alone. Um, that you may be found blameless and guiltless before our Heavenly Father. Not by what you've done, but by what Christ has done for you. God's peace. We'll see you back here on Monday.